the Philadelphia 76ers finally in the news for the right reasons. They have officially, I guess they're they're finalizing a deal to sign Joel Embiid to a super max extension, four years, $196 million. So now that keeps him in Philadelphia through the 2026-2027 season, which is the next six years. And over the course of that, he will be making a fully fully guaranteed $261 million. There are no more provisions or stipulations that protect the 76ers in case of a catastrophic, knock on wood, catastrophic lower back foot injury. There are no advantages and outs for the 76ers at this point, not in this contract. Joel Embiid will make every single dollar of it. And to be honest, he he's deserving of that money. And the fact that he negotiated this deal by himself is, ex- <laughs> is it, it takes a lot of gumption. It takes a lot of cojones. And from that perspective, happy for him that he's continuing to earn his money. He, he is worth every single bit of it. Not to mention he played through a torn right meniscus in the playoffs last year. Didn't need surgery, just missed one game. So, Hopefully, he's trending in the right direction as far as health is concerned. Now, as far as an individual talent, and and it kind of brings up the question, well, will the Philadelphia 76ers be able to win a championship during this extension? Now, as an individual, as an individual talent, there's no question that Joel Embiid individually is a good enough and a talented enough NBA player to win the 76ers a title. I do believe that he is good enough. He's got the goods to be the best player on a championship team. We've seen how he's been able to lead the 76ers four straight postseasons. And this is a guy who last year had a career year, 28 and a half points over 10 and a half rebounds, about three assists over 50% shooting from the floor, 38% from the three, 86% from the free throw line, second best PR in the league last year behind Nikola Jokovic, uh, second finished second in the MVP voting. Behind Jokic, he would have been the NBA's MVP if he maybe played in 10 more games. So you look at the accolades, this guy's got the whole package. Four-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA player, three-time All-Defensive player. So when you look at his skill set, there isn't there aren't any weaknesses in his game. There isn't anything he can't do. He can post you up. He can hit the mid-range. He can extend extend you out to the three-point line. He shoots the three ball extremely well. He makes his free throws. He's a great rebounder, a versatile defender, an elite defender, especially in today's NBA when normally seven-footers, and he's a legit seven-footer, are liabilities when they're switched out onto guards. He's not a liability. So again, sure, his motor can maybe be a little bit better each year, and, and his basketball acumen can increase. I think he can take more guys into the post more frequently. Sure, that those are ways that he can get better, and I'm sure he's working on that in the offseason. But as an individual talent, absolutely. No, I totally believe he's good enough. But the roster as it's currently constructed, with this core principle and core foundation of Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Tobias Harris, no. They will not win an NBA title. This was the year to do it. And we saw what happened to Ben Simmons. He's absolutely psychologically scarred and traumatized. And if he were to return to the 76ers, I think it would only exacerbate it. He needs a new location. And so if they don't trade Ben Simmons and they try and keep him around or they don't get enough uh, enticing offers for him and they try and run it back with this team, No, they're not going to win an NBA title. It it just won't happen. And it's not for Joel Embiid not elevating his level of play. I read out the stats that he posted during the regular season. In the postseason against the Hawks, his numbers ticked up. He averaged 30 points, 13 rebounds, four assists, two blocks, a steal a game. He played well in in the postseason, but again, he needed Ben Simmons to come with him. He needed Tobias Harris to play like an all-star. 
So if those are the three guys in company that you're trying to roll with for the next three, four years, or six years in Joel Embiid's case, no, you're not going to win a title. Here's the other reason why you wouldn't win a title. Because say what you want about Joel Embiid's age, saying, oh, he's, he's 27 years old, he's hitting the prime of his career. Age-wise, technically, yes, he is entering the prime of his career. But health-wise, I, I hope he stays healthy, but I don't know what the next three to four years are going to look like for him. Will his knees hold up? Will his legs hold up? Will his back hold up? I hope it does because he's a transcendent player and a transcendent talent. But the reality is you look at the best teams in the NBA, and while they're older, the window isn't necessarily just one year. You look at the Lakers. Sure, LeBron is aging, but he's still probably going to remain there for the next two to three years with Anthony Davis, who, yes, is brittle as well. But it's not like the Lakers maybe won't be able to pair him with someone else. You got Westbrook here. Maybe they find someone else. The Brooklyn Nets, Harden and KD are 31 and 32 respectively. Uh, respectively. So they're going to age extremely well because their games don't rely on their athleticism. They are prolific scorers and absolute snipers, lethal jump shooters and three-point shooters. That's something that can translate later in your career that can keep you relevant. So who's to say that the Brooklyn Nets aren't going to stick around for, for a little bit? The, the Bucks just won the NBA title. They're not going anywhere. Giannis, quite frankly, is better than Joel Embiid, and he's younger, and he's 26, and he's healthier. And the Bucs have actually had the 76ers' number the last three years. They swept them in all three games last year. They beat them both, both times in 2020. And they've won six straight games over the 76ers dating back to the last two and a half years. So I don't know if the 76ers can get over that hump either. And listen, the Celtics, the Hawks are continuing to get better, I think. They're going to retool with some different pieces in the West. The Warriors aren't going anywhere with Steph. You got Luka and the Mavs. Devin Booker and Phoenix just reached the NBA Finals. There are up-and-coming teams, Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz. There are a lot of elite teams that could still pose as roadblocks to the Philadelphia 76 or so I, I wouldn't be convinced that they're just all of a sudden going to be good enough to win. However, I, I will say this. So again, the outlook for some of these other teams is extremely bright. However, if they can find their hands on a Damian Lillard or on a Bradley Beal, or they can acquire a bona fide superstar or superstar talent or develop a player into a superstar during this time frame then I'll retract my statement and I'll revise it and I'll amend it. Because then, yes, then they can win an NBA title. They get a guy like Damian Lillard on the roster with Joel Embiid, with Tobias Harris and that company, the cast of characters. Yeah, well, th well then they, that that's a team that can legitimately win an NBA title. But the way that they're currently, uh, uh, the way that they're currently constructed right now I don't see that happening. I just don't see that happening.